Welcome to Tokyo Saurus. So what's up in Japan? So there's been some rumblings around the internet lately, specifically in the Japanese online communities, regarding the really, really low TV viewership ratings for Gundam Build Divers, to the point where it seems like it's pretty much the lowest a Gundam series has ever gotten in the history of the franchise. Now just as a disclaimer, I actually like Gundam Build Divers, maybe even more so than Gundam Build Fighters, but I'm also a big Gunpla fan, so I'm probably a little biased here. But I can see why it may not appeal to every Gundam fan out there the same way a more traditional Gundam series would, where they're using real Gundams instead of Gunpla inside a virtual world setting. And it's obvious from the start, the intended audience for all the Gundam build series is a bit younger than a typical Gundam entry like Iron Blooded Orphans, but even so, the series has its own charms, even as someone who loves the main titles, and as long as you go into the series, with all of that in mind, I feel like you can enjoy it for what it is. But back to the subject at hand, the numbers for Gundam Build Divers is looking pretty bad. Across the board, from episode 1 to 14, we are getting consistently below 1%, and if you compare that to the previous Gundam Build Fighters try who ended off at 1.42%, or Gundam Build Fighters who ended off at 1.64%, we're at around half of the amount of people who watched the previous series in terms of viewership for Gundam Build Divers. So it's a pretty big surprise to see Gundam Build Divers hover around 0.6-0.7% for their latest episodes. But is that really what's happening here? Did the series really drop off that much since the last entry in the Gundam franchise? Well, first let's take a look at the rating system in Japan. All major Japanese TV networks make up the television market, so a research firm must determine the size of an average audience. The audience size is determined using two factors, the amount of content transmitted and the amount that is received. The view count for each episode is calculated using various polling methods, which is how we get the percentage once you divide the view count by the market size. So, to give you an idea, something as popular as One Piece has 5.6% for an episode in June, and Iron Blooded Orphans Season 1 had an average of 2.25% for the entirety of its run. Quite a big difference when you just listen to the numbers, but some people immediately pointed out that these numbers did not include views from YouTube and online sources. But if you're in Japan, Gundam Build Divers is actually not free on YouTube. You have to pay, I think, 100 yen per episode, unlike in the West, where we get weekly episodes for free. So most people would probably be watching it on TV if they wanted to watch that week's episode anyways. And also, another problem is, you can't see how many views are in each episode in the paid version, so there's no way to know just how many people watched it unless you're Sunrise or Bandai. Unless there's another way to watch Gundam Build Divers online officially that some of you may know, it's looking pretty grim for this series right now. But let's see how it's doing in the Western market. So Gundam Build Divers started off pretty well with the prologue getting 1.5 million views, and the first episode getting 2.1 million views, but as each episode went on, that number dropped drastically below 1 million, and now hovers in the 400 to 500,000 view range. Compare this to Gundam Build Fighters, which was the first Gundam Build series. The first episode started at 2 million views, maintained viewership pretty close to 1 million, and the later episodes shot back up above 1 million, with the last two episodes hitting over 2 million again. So as you can tell from the previous Gundam Build series, it usually drops after the first episode for a while until we get closer and closer to the climax of the story, which it will shoot back up to much, much higher numbers. We're not there yet for Gundam Build Divers, nor do we know if that will be the case for this new Gundam Build series, but there is going to be a rise in viewership when we get into episode 20 and higher. Some people believe that the Build series changed too much where in Fighters the focus was on the Gundam modeling or Gunpla aspects, Whereas in Divers, it's more focused on the virtual reality gaming aspect, which resulted in the massive dip in audience. But for a show that is supposed to be made for a younger audience, you would think that there would be more kids watching this show, but it turns out, there's just as many teens, if not more teens, and definitely more males between 20 to 34, watching this show instead of kids. So it seems like they might have to switch it up a bit for the next build series, and maybe just make the show for your average Gundam fan instead of trying to make it a kid's show. Because for me, the concept of the world and the setting is great, it's just that the story and the characters are a little too simple. Gundam Build Divers isn't done yet, so we shouldn't totally write it off, but I really think we might be in for some big changes in the next build series. It's a pretty exciting time for Gundam fans right now, as the next project for Iron Blooded Orphans is about to be announced. We just got another confirmation that 4 mecha designers has signed onto the upcoming project, so it definitely doesn't seem like a small project anymore. Whether it ends up being a sequel to IBO or a prequel about the Calamity Wars, people are thinking it's going to be something big. Anyways, what do you guys think of Gundam Build Divers and do you think it's the worst Gundam series in the entire Gundam franchise? I certainly don't think so, but definitely let me know down in the poll and comments below. Thumbs up the video if you liked it, hit the bell for notifications if you want to be updated with the latest that's going on in Japan, and I'll see you guys in the next one.